Hey adventurers, welcome to another video for the Steve Adventure Academy. As you can see today, we are not in the wilds of Albert County. We are living in Albert County, but we're filming from the big comfy couch. This is going to be a, uh, what I hope will be a brief survival guide for COVID-19. Yes, my wife and I, we do everything together. And so we uh, <clears throat> decided to, uh, well, we got exposed. It's going to happen. Experts say that we all have a date with the with the man, as they say. <clears throat> and so, uh, we had uh, COVID-19 together. We we're, uh, you know, the COVID couple. And uh, it was a pretty rough go. And so, we had a, a lots of time to try stuff. Some things worked out, some things not so much. And so, I figured I'd hit the high points of the things that really did seem to help. Now, you can dive deep into all of the varieties of medications, uh, vitamins, and those kinds of uh, accoutrements of illness that uh, you feel might help this that's not this video uh, we are going to talk about <clears throat> some ways that we uh, that we were able to uh, come through it and uh, some things that didn't help so much so things that mistakes were made uh, first one I would say is <clears throat> clearly you're going to want to stay hydrated Early on, that's going to be difficult because you're going to have flu-like symptoms. It's very likely you're going to have the body aches like you've been run over by an automobile. Uh, having had a crushing injury to my foot from a 500-pound machine whose weight came down on the, on the center of my foot on a three and two and a half by two and a half inch square steel plate, broke several bones, I will tell you that the body ache feels like that. So it feels like a crushing injury, so I would say be prepared with your favorite painkillers. Um, even some muscle relaxants might be a good idea. Not a pharmacist, not a doctor. This is not medical advice. However, the body ache is ruthless. Um, I would also suggest that you set up a couple of places that you can recline uh, enough to sleep and have those locations set up all the time. That way when the body ache really kicks in because you've been in one position for a long period and also your muscles and your body is just really angry, about what's going on at the molecular level. Uh, you can change positions. Uh, you probably even want to leave the blankets uh, blankets at location A, location B. If you can get to location C, where you could actually sleep and be very comfortable and warm, that's going to be a big win. <coughs> Pardon the leftover cough. It's the cough that never ends. It just goes on and on and on. In any case, uh, moving forward, what's... Uh, once the body aches kick in and you've, uh, you're dealing with that, it's uh, going to be difficult to maintain your nutrition. Hydration is also going to be tricky too. Much more difficult than I thought. Live and learn. Um, things that worked. Well, I'm going to start with things that didn't work. Lipton cup of soup doesn't work. Here's what I would suggest you do. Pour the cup of soup probably onto a cutting board Take your butter knife, use the back of the butter knife to scrape away, put the noodles on the one side because y'all are going to want them. You may even want to have some ramen noodles that you could, so you can um, supplement your noodles and you'll have more noodle soup. But what you're really doing is you're scraping the food value to the one side and you want to leave behind at least two thirds of the soup base. That sodium is going to smell good and it's going to taste good, assuming you can still taste stuff, but what's going to happen is it's going to get in your body, at least in my experience, it got in my body, after about 35 or 40 minutes, all of that sodium starts pulling the moisture out of your tissues, and guess what? You're already down the rabbit hole for body aches. So hallelujah, hold on, because uh, a whole thing of lifted cup of soup in the regular amount of water is really going to hurt. So, um, <coughs> mind your sodium intake. What, uh, one of the things that we did that worked, these guys right here. Now, I'm not endorsing any particular brand, so that's as much of the label as I'll show you. But essentially, these are these uh, drinkable meal supplements. Uh, the calorie count's not real high, so you're not going to be introducing a lot of sugar, which, again, when you're sitting still, can cause body aches, and you've already got that, trust me. Um, it's, but it's got a lot of uh, nutritional value. It's something that's very easy to do. You can drag yourself to the fridge, pull one out. Ah, blinded, I'm a vampire. And you get your, your uh, 
drinkable supplement in the flavor that you've already tested and like, um, and off you are to the races. Other things that worked, uh, these guys right here. Uh, these are packets of uh, vitamins and uh, electrolytes. I can't tell you how much there is. I would not endorsing a specific brand, but something with some kind of electrolyte so your body has that fuel to still run because you're going to be looking after yourself. So you're going to need some energy. Um, these, I would say, this particular brand worked really well for us. Um, I would say don't drink that after, say, 8 or 9 o'clock because the, it's got a fair bit of zip in it. And as your body's consuming that fuel, it's going to be difficult to fall asleep. You're going to want to sleep through as much COVID-19 as you can. <coughs> uh, hydration was tricky. I didn't find personally that the ginger ale, watered down ginger ale, worked very well for me. However, uh, it's a good idea just to have that break, that difference of flavor, uh, because it's very likely you're going to be um, consuming a lot of fluids throughout the whole thing. I don't want to say drinking your way through it, but... You're, you're going to be consuming a lot of fluids and probably not a lot of hard food. Uh, hard food is difficult to eat. Uh, the body aches make it difficult. And you're in kind of a hard spot. And so uh, the, your digestion may not be on. Circling to, through to digestion, if you embark on a process of a series of medications, like we did, to try and boost your immunity, I would say the pro tip is don't take them like they're a meal. So I would probably take one kind of medication, even if it's just the one pill, and I would wait at least an hour. And then the next, and then the next, and then the next. Two reasons for that. One, it's gonna give you some kind of entertainment value because you're timing something, so there's a reason to move around, um, and that can be valuable, rather than just staring at a TV that's not on for 48 hours, which is part of what we, I did, I won't lie. It was a difficult time. But um, what we found is that if you take all your medication at once, like a good little boy, all of that medication is going to be in your stomach at the same time. And it's all probably time release. What I found is that all that time release medication went off like a grenade in my guts, which can cause nausea, vomiting, and dehydration. Those are not your friends. And so definitely space out the medications. I would also suggest that you test drive uh, any medications you're planning to use uh, if, in the event that you contract it and you're symptomatic, <clears throat> which is, you know, the numbers are there. Just enjoy them. Uh, the reason I would suggest that is that we may, have, uh, we may have tried a product that rhymes with one of my favorite firearms, Iver Johnson. And so <clears throat> we may have test driven a, uh, a, an immune boost, uh, something that's... Uh, designed for people, they won a Nobel Prize, look it up, uh, the Joe Rogan thing, come on guys, really? Anyway, I'll digress. One of my favorite firearms tends to be Ivor Johnson. And so, it's we may have test driven a medication designed for people and adapted into the equine area. <clears throat> Nobel Prize, don't forget. Um, and. Uh, that was a dramatic experience. And so you're definitely going to want to figure out what the dosage is going to be. And again, this is not medical advice. This is just gastrointestinal experience of one person. Um, it uh, looked like windshield washer fluid. And having never tried windshield washer fluid, I would suggest that it might have been windshield washer fluid. Uh, and again, I'm just kidding. But it was uh, very dramatic. It was difficult for me personally to process. And so one might want to uh, test drive that before you're in a situation where you're already dehydrated, you're already really under the gun when it comes to your medical condition. And just, uh, well, let's be honest, there's a certain amount of suffering that goes on in life. Um, <clears throat> so we've talked about the top two. I would say this is my number one suggestion. And frankly, I love this all the time. This is just basic old orange juice. I do find that uh, you can, the pulp-free versions are a little bit less acidic and better for my overall gastrointestinal health, but you do you. Here's what makes orange juice magic. 20%. 20% solution in your glass, top it up with water. What I like about that is you're not getting a big sugar hit, 
It's very easy to process for your body because it's natural sugars. You're not getting hit with a lot of sugars. Um, the There are <clears throat> a variety of more healthy ones. Um, I would probably stay away from the fish oil because I don't find the fish oil as easy to digest when my stomach is uh, off like it would have been during the COVID. Uh, other things that I would say is look at the nutritional information because some of the... Uh, more healthy or blue menu choices actually have sugar added and so you're getting more sugar than you would be just in the regular one you don't need it um, but the a 20 to 25 percent orange juice uh, to water lets you you can manage your sugar intake so if you need a little more change the ratio if you're getting too much or you're doing other things like these guys then maybe you want to run the sugar a little lower. Uh, it gives flavor to the water, so you're not going to get that, oh my gosh, I can't drink another glass of water. It gives uh, calories, and there's a, there's a boost. Experts that are not me, nutritionists, have suggested that a glass of orange juice has the same amount of, holy moly, let's get the day going, as a cup of coffee. I didn't find that coffee was going to be for me during this time, but the watered down orange juice, just running it on a scale back and forth, if you put in too much, you can always drink the top and then pull it in a little to bring the sugar levels down. But it was a fantastic way to stay hydrated, and I just like it generally in life. So, <coughs> takeaway tips at the end. Test drive the medications you're planning to use when you're sick while you're well. You want to know what's going to happen. I had some reactions I didn't expect. Um, spread your medications out over time rather than taking all of that, that you know, that handful of stuff, um, a variety of vitamins all at once because that's going to hit you like a grenade and with nothing, not much else in there, it could be difficult. Um, hydration, 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 of course. Uh, you can't possibly drink too much. Uh, you, well, let me say that again. You can't possibly drink too many things that are good for you that are not going to cause dehydration and mood swings and give you problems. can't believe I said on the internet that you can't possibly drink too much. That's a little weird. But the medications spread out, staying hydrated, um, avoiding the sodium trap. So if you're going to eat ramen noodles, again, you, you need to really, really seriously consider how much sodium you're going to intake before you get sick because your sick brain is just going to say, I need food, I can't stand up long, what am I going to do that's easy? Uh, we also did a fair bit of boiled eggs uh, and uh, toast. I would suggest crackers are probably a good idea, but really these guys were the, uh, the savior of the situation. Uh, final thoughts, all the best to you. May you live a thousand years and never have uh, any symptomology, uh, exposed or not. And also... When you start coming back to solid foods, just remember that your guts have been processing mostly liquid diet for however many days. For us, it was nine or 10 at least. And so you need to be a little bit careful when you go back to solid food because uh, your brain is gonna say, hey, you know what? I would like to fall face first into a deep dish pizza. That's a good idea because pizza is a very whole food. However, let's eat one slice and then wait a while see how things pan out because your lower abdominal areas and your intestines are going to get the shock of a lifetime if you go too hard in the paint. And so that's been our uh, COVID survival guide <clears throat> from Steve Adventure Academy. And so on every day and in every way, we hope that you or your exposure when it comes will be light, symptom free. You'll never know the difference. And if, and if you do have symptoms, in Jesus' name, be healed. Thanks so much for watching. We'll hopefully have some more videos coming out very soon. And we appreciate your patience. Also, congratulations to you all for getting up to, uh, for a minute, we were at 381 subscribers. 379 for a long time. So good for you. All the best. Stay sharp. Bye now.